Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our Python programming series. Today's topic is a key concept in the programming world, object-oriented programming, or OOP for short. This paradigm is fundamental regardless of which programming language you decide to master. Any piece of code you write, any project you undertake, is likely to involve some degree of object-oriented design. Let's dive into classes and objects and why they're important in Python. Think of a class as an animal blueprint, let's say a dog. This blueprint class defines what a dog is. It has properties like name, breed, age, and behaviors, which are methods in programming terms like bark, eat, and sleep. However, this class dog is just a concept. It doesn't bark, it doesn't sleep. It merely describes what a dog is and what it can do. Now an object is an instance of a class. Let's say we create two objects, Fido and Buddy, from the dog class. Both Fido and Buddy have the properties of a dog. They have a name, breed, age, and they can bark, eat, and sleep. However, Fido and Buddy are distinct entities and their properties can be different. Fido might be a three-year-old German Shepherd, while Buddy is a five-year-old Golden Retriever. Why is this useful? Well, first of all, real world modeling. Classes and objects help model real world concepts into code, making it easier to understand and work with. Second, reusability. Once you've made a dog class, you can create as many dog objects as you need, saving you the effort of defining dogs again and again. And last but not least, organization. It helps you organize and structure your code better. By creating a class dog, you can use it to create any number of dog objects, each with its own set of attributes and behaviors. This is the essence of object-oriented programming. It allows you to create structured, reusable, and intuitive code. First, let's think of a class as a blueprint or a plan. Let's use the example of a person. This person blueprint is our class, and it can contain some basic information that every person has, like a name and an age. But right now, it's just a blueprint. It's not a specific person, just a general idea of what a person is. In Python, we can start creating this blueprint by typing class person, colon, and then for now, just say pass. Next, let's create a specific person, or in programming terms, an instance of the person class. This is our object. Let's call this object P. To create P as a person, we type P is equal to person and then parentheses. Now P is an instance of our person class or a person object. However, our person blueprint is a bit empty right now. Let's give it some attributes like a name and an age. To do this in Python, we use a special function called underscore underscore init underscore underscore. Again, note that there are two underscores before and after the init function. This is our initialization method, which allows us to set up attributes when we create a new person object. We can define this method in our person class like this, def init, and then in parentheses, self comma name comma h. The self keyword is a reference to the current instance of this class and is used to access its attributes. Name and age will be parameters that we pass in to define what this object's name and age will be. Inside this method, we'll assign the values passed as arguments to the name and age attributes of the person object. Self.name is equal to name and self.age is equal to age. Now, every time we create a new person object, we'll provide a name and an age, like so. P1 is equal to person, and then in parentheses, Bob comma 22. Here, Bob and 22 are the attributes of the P1 object. Finally, Let's add some functionality to our person class with methods. These are functions defined inside a class that perform actions related to the objects of the class. For example, we could create a getName method that prints the person's name, def getName in parentheses self, and a getAge method that prints the person's age, def getAge and in parentheses self. In both methods, we refer to the object's attributes by using self.name and self.age. Now, if we want to find out the name and age of P1, we simply call these methods on the P1 object, p1.getName and p1.getH. To summarize, 
object-oriented programming in Python is all about creating classes, which are blueprints, and objects, which are instances of these blueprints. It allows us to structure our code in a way that is easy to understand and reuse, mirroring how we categorize and think about the world around us. That's it for this video on object-oriented programming. Thanks so much for listening, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.